Hello everybody and welcome to this week's video. This week I am doing something kind of fun. I'm going to Leavenworth on Friday. If you don't know what Leavenworth is, it's this really cute Bavarian town in the mountains of Washington and it's about three hours away from me. So I'm going there. Today is Sunday. I'm going on Friday and I figured why not make a really cute Bavarian outfit to take a photo shoot with because it literally looks like you're in Germany or something. So I am going to make a dirndl this week. I've never made one before I bought a pattern to use. I think the fabrics are kind of cool. Before I get too far ahead of myself, this video is sponsored by Squarespace and you'll be hearing more about them later. One of my favorite parts about dirndls is the apron. I always, ever since I was little, I just thought aprons were so much fun. So here's the fabric I got. This is for the blouse. It's kind of different. It's not a straight cotton. It's like this textured linen stuff. I thought it would be really pretty. My vision was to have the stripes be the skirt, so like that. And then I have this really pretty cotton pattern thing for the corset part of the dress. For the apron, I bought this linen and I'm just really excited. I think it's gonna be a really fun, easy, and pretty project to do. Today, I think I want to cut out my pattern pieces and maybe start on either the bodice or the skirt and kind of go from there. Like I said, I am using a pattern. I got it off of Etsy and I'll link it down below. It was $10, I think. And it saves me the hassle of having to make one by myself when I don't know what a traditional dirndl pattern is supposed to be like. So let's get started. I will say I was really annoyed because I was trying to do research on like what a traditional dirndl is supposed to be. And it was so hard for me to find references um, and patterns and pictures of an actual traditional dirndl. Everything that would come up was like a sexy Halloween costume or something. And that's not what I'm going for. I'm going for something traditional that will fit in. Luckily, I think this pattern will be good. And I just don't want it to be skimpy. I want it to be good. I'm going to make a mock-up. I don't know how well this pattern will fit because I've never used it before and I don't want to have to get more fabric. So I'm gonna find just some cotton to use right now. And that way I can test it out before I use the real stuff. Traditional dirndl has a zipper on the front. So I've pinned that in place for now. The pattern fits really well for a mock-up. I'm really impressed. It's perfect fit. It's not too tight. It's not too loose. On the back of it, it fits really well on the back. Fits good here. I think the only thing I'm gonna do is it goes out too far right here to where I just know if I, don't change that. It's just weird, especially once there's a lining. So I think I'm gonna like trim that. I don't know how I feel about the neckline that goes out and then in. I prefer to go just like that, but I don't know if that would make it not so traditional. So I might keep the neckline going like this, but at least on this armhole, I'm gonna make it a bit bigger. Other than that, I really like the bodice and I think it's gonna be really pretty with this. So I am going to take this off and cut just on the pattern, cut this off a little bit, and then I can cut the real fabric. Turn around while I was feeling that and he, he is such a mood. <laughs> Hubert, you are so cute. <laughs> Here's my pieces in case you're wondering. This is what's left. I bought exactly one yard and just these scraps left. It took t all of the yard to get this done. Just a note that in the pattern, it calls to add piping to the seams. I'm choosing not to do that. Hopefully I won't regret it. It also has the option, if you don't want piping, it says you can just like stitch trim on the seams. So if I do it and I do want something extra, then I'll add the trim. But I don't have piping on hand right now and I have a deadline to do this. So I'm just gonna do it without the piping. But keep that in mind that if you are gonna make this, piping would make it look cool and I would do piping if I had it on hand, but I'm not gonna go out and get it just for that. With the 
two lining and outer fabric sewn. I'm doing a technique. It has this in the instructions for this too. And it's just something that I normally do when it's like a vest like this. And it's kind of complicated to describe. So I'm just going to show you. You lay the two pieces, so like the lining and the outer fabric on top of each other like this. And then I'm going through, I'm pinning them right now. You're going to pin around the armholes and the necklines. And once they're pinned down, you're going to want to sew around both of them. That is easy enough. The tricky part is afterwards. This is basically just a way to finish off the seams and attach the lining in a hidden way so that the inside and the outside are clean. Now that I've sewn on the edges, basically what I'm gonna do is flip it inside out through the armholes. The neck and armholes will be finished and you don't have to even serge anything at all. It's been a couple days, so I can't remember where I left off with the bodice, but I turned it inside out, or out right side out, I guess, and ironed it so that the seams are crisp. Uh, so right now it's good to put aside. I think it would look good with piping, but I really like how it looks now. With the pattern, pattern doesn't match perfect, but it looks pretty cute. I think it's really a perfect fit. So I'm moving on to the skirt, which is like the simplest skirt you can do. I ordered two yards of this striped cotton from Joann's and I'm using the whole two yards. I cut it 30 inches long. I think it was a 45 inch wide fabric. So the skirt is 30 inches long now, but I wanted to do a wide hem. And now I don't know about that because I prefer skirts to be longer. I think it'd look really good with the image in my head, a longer skirt to go with an apron. I don't know if it's the proper way of doing things for a dirndl, but I kind of want to add a ruffle to make it longer. I'm going to gather it first. I did two basting stitches on the top and I'm working on gathering it right now. Normally I don't do two basting rows. I only do one, which is kind of a faster way to do it. But lately my threads have been breaking more often. So I am gathering this together before I add it to the bodice. And I'm really excited to sew it to the bodice and see how well they match together. And then it's gonna be a hop, skip, and a jump till the end. Let's take a brief moment to talk about the sponsor for this video, Squarespace. If you haven't heard about them, Squarespace is a website building platform that allows you to build the website of your dreams with just a few easy steps. Even if you've never made a website before, one of the reasons I love Squarespace is that they make it so easy to do and they take you through the process. Not only that, but they have a variety of different website options for you to choose from. If you want to create a blog or a portfolio to show your work or even a e-commerce space to sell a product, they have all of the options that you could need for your perfect website. And they also allow you to buy your own domain with no hidden fees. So you'll be able to find the perfect name for your website. You can go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you are ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash Alexandra Louise, or you can use code Alexandra Louise at checkout for 10% off of your first purchase of a domain or website. Let's get back to the dirndl. How am I supposed to sew when there is a sleeping angel on my desk? I do not want to scare him, but I have work to do. With it gathered, we now have a little more complicated task of adding it to the bodice. Pretty like close gathers. I think two yards is- Okay, I ran out of storage, but mm, excuse me, excuse me. Dirndl dress is pretty much done. I hemmed the skirt. I added a zipper, which my I wasn't able to record it, but basically I really ever only use invisible zippers, <laughs> but I use a normal zipper. So it was different than normal. And I have to be honest that this dress is like the nicest construction wise thing I've pretty much ever made. I feel like my issue with most things I make is that because my job is mainly online posting videos, I feel like I have to create content faster than I can sew. And therefore, a lot of the things I sew aren't top quality. They look really good and I put as much effort as I can into them, but finishing wise, especially on the inside, is just not the best because I don't feel like I, 
I just have to keep creating content to be able to keep sewing. So I just have to be sewing extra fast. My point with saying this is that I'm really pleased with how the construction of this dress is because I've taken a little bit more time making it look good on the outside and on the inside, but I'm just really happy because it just looks so nice and it looks professional and that's something I don't always have the luxury of doing. But now I'm going to start working on the bodice which I'm kind of excited for the bodice. I think it will tie the whole thing together. I'm trying to decide what I want to do for the sleeves though. I think I'm going to do long sleeves. For my research, I'm not found a whole lot of dirndls that have long sleeves, but I'm sure they're out there. Part of the reason I wanted to do long sleeves is that I just prefer how I look in long sleeves. And also, since I am taking this to Leavenworth for photos, if you don't know, Leavenworth is in the mountains. So it's always a little bit colder there. And also it's going to be extra cold because I'm gonna do videos and photos in the morning before it gets too crowded. It's gonna be even colder, so I just wanna be warm. So I'm gonna do this with long sleeves or maybe like three quarter length sleeves. Just not super short like you would think when you see pictures of this dress. Shortly after this, I decided that I needed to put up floating shells in this little nook I have in my living room area. So I stopped what I was doing. I went to Target. I bought these shelves and I put them up and they look really, really good now. And they are the cutest things ever. And you need to go put floating shelves in an empty space right now. I promise you won't regret it. It looks so good. Y'all, I have been rushing today <laughs> to get this done because I'm leaving tomorrow afternoon. And as of this morning, I did not have the dress done or the bodice or hadn't even started the apron. So I did not film making the bodice because I wasn't rushed for time, but here it is. One thing about dirndl bodices is that they are cropped because it just adds extra bulk. So this ends right there instead of my waist uh, and it has a little drawstring this is the second one i had to make the first one the sleeves were way too puffy i it looked dumb so i made the sleeves on the pattern a little less puffy and now i'm going to do the apron really quick the apron is the easiest thing i have the linen cut out my apron is going to be about 25 inches long and a yard wide and then i'm just gonna sew that up really quick and hopefully be done with it soon because i am running out of time mm -hmm. 